I think our challenge is to really strike the important balance of how did our history shape the company we are today, and how do we know from our history how to make ourselves better and inform where we're going. So for me, talking about the history of our company, talking about the past leaders, is just a way for us to understand the people whose shoulders we're standing on. It's all a great opportunity to build a foundation to help our leadership team, the employees of this company, really understand who we are as a company, and from that, really put our arms around and embrace who we can be as a company. Owens Corning was founded in 1938. It was a 50-50 joint venture between Owens, Illinois, and Corning Glass. And the two of those companies came together and found some new technology that allowed them to commercialize the manufacturing process of fibrous glass. This uh, fiber was a nuisance. It bothered me. I couldn't perform my experiment. And there was a little pile of these fibers on the floor, and Slater saw them and said, geez, we must be able to do something with these. Took off like a boy with a wagon load of new toys. He said, oh, glass fiber, wonderful. The company in many ways was formed against rather formidable odds. The genesis of Owens Corning came uh, during the 30s. This was a depressionary period, and so each company was looking for new uses for glass products to supplement the capacity that they had in place. And the resistance in almost every case was very significant. The very first product we made was a fiberglass furnace filter. Those things that you buy at the hardware store that have the cardboard around the outside, it took advantage of the fact that fiberglass acts as a filtration medium. As World War II came into being, the war material demands for various fibrous glass products was very high. By the end of World War II, the sales were up at $40 million from just about zero. Then the war ended, and these end uses, which had been required by the military, evaporated. Almost overnight, we had to start from scratch to develop products for the commercial markets. My father was a very energetic, dynamic individual. He was almost a, an evangelist as far as fibrous glass was concerned. He set a very good example for all of us that followed him. One of the interesting things about Owens Corning is we have a legacy of demand creation. If you go back to the very, very beginning, we produced a product that had some unique physical characteristics and nobody had heard of it. And we had no market, we had no customers, all we had was a, some fibers. And we went out into the marketplace and looked for problems that needed to be solved. And we tried to match up those problems with the unique characteristics of our products. When we started the uh, Santa Clara plant, I don't think you could buy more than three inch thick insulation. And much of what we made was an inch and a half thick. And we could produce a lot more than we could sell. So we were constantly trying to move into new markets against established products. So this was a, a, a tremendous challenge to fight off products that had been in the market for 20, 30, 40, 50 years or longer. And here was a new concept, fiberglass reinforced plastics. Well, we had a, a major effort with architects and engineers to rewrite the specifications and get our products initially just in as an equal taking on the challenge of growing this new company from a very small beginning into a major factor in the marketplace. My predecessor, General Norstad, had had a very distinguished military career, and his last assignment was head of NATO. He brought his organizational skills to the company and made some changes there from the very functional type of organization to a more market customer-driven type of organization. You had pillars of functions, the manufacturing function, the marketing and sales function, the research and development. These people had not been accustomed to working very well together in many cases. Those kinds of things to me are not one company. It's linked to business results, it's linked to performance, it's linked to what's best for the company. It's not about sameness. It really is about getting the diversity of our talents and the diversity of our people and the capabilities and the talents of our people all melded together into one clear overriding ambition, which is to do what's best for Owens Corning.
They were working on a new fiber, and when they were making a trial run, they bought some out-of-spec binder. The binder holds the fibers together. And when they put it in, it turned the insulation pink. And Ted Peck, who was in charge of the division at the time, said, oh, I think it's a pretty good idea. That's an easy way to differentiate this new fiber from the old one. Keep it pink. And they did. We're the first company to be able to trademark a color pink. And I think that gives us a huge advantage when we're talking about communicating with our marketplace. Here's a few hundred dollars worth of pink Owens Corning fiberglass. Yeah, pink Owens Corning we're fiberglass. Pink fiberglass insulation. Insulation is cheaper than oil. I think the fact that we didn't really kind of give much thought to taking on an Alaska pipeline or a Hajj terminal project indicates our willingness to move into new areas, try new things, brand new things to grow the business and make it more successful. It was part of the makeup of Owens Corning. It became apparent that the residential roofing industry was not going to move to fiberglass shingles. So really our only choice was to buy a shingle manufacturer to make the conversion ourselves on a national basis. It was a bold move, but much of our growth, if you look at it, has been converting alternative materials to glass fiber materials. We could not acquire any company that manufactured fiberglass, incorporated fibrous glass in its manufacturing process, or distributed fibrous glass. And we acquired the Lloyd A. Fry Roofing Company. They were also the most obsolete of the companies. If we wanted to get into the business, that was really our only alternative. The uh, tonnage in terms of glass fiber mat that has gone literally through every manufacturer now, I think with few exceptions in the United States. The values of the people of Owens Corning are integrity, respect, accountability, fun, sharing, candor, and innovation. And we put fun in the middle for a reason, because we really do like what we do and who we do it with. We could always been there, but we never made much out of it. So we wanted the people to insulate, we wanted to make sure they did it with pink. That led us to the Pink Panther. Uh, the advertising people came to me and said that they had a new spokesman. And when they came out with the Pink Panther, I tried not to admit that I didn't know who the Pink Panther was, but I didn't. He said, who's the Pink Panther? So I called my mother and asked her whether she knew the Pink Panther. Well, she did and was very enthusiastic about it. So I decided that the Pink Panther was probably an okay spokesman for the company. The business environment in the 80s, the hostile takeover attempts, that was the mood of the economy at the time. Owens Corning got caught up in that, and uh, I think we rose to the challenge. We were really caught by surprise and Bill Beschenstein and the board of directors had to make a decision as to whether we were better off succumbing to the Wix takeover attempt or to continue the management of the company by itself. We had to downsize from a company of 28,000 employees to, I believe, 18,000 or thereabouts, and not over a period of years, but in a period of months. Actions that were very distasteful to me personally. The net result of that was we took on some $2 billion of additional debt. It's selling off whole businesses. But under the circumstances, we had no choice. And yes, we did it. It was, But that was a tough time. Uh, we take a stand, we are unequivocal on that stand. It's just the way it is, full stop. And I think there's real power in, in really truly deciding and knowing that you are, and you're not going anyplace else. That's just the way it's going to be. Max was just about everything that you'd want in a leader. Very hard worker, set a terrific example in that respect. He knew the company inside and out. He was tough uh, when he had to be. Uh, people followed him very naturally because of his own strength of leadership. When Glenn Heiner came on board, he made the decision that uh, we really ought to push, we are a materials company. Glenn came in the very first day and said, we've been at $3 billion for the last six years. By the end of this century, we'll be at five. And nobody believed him but himself. And uh, we gave that goal to everybody. Uh, we put a value system around it, and we put a clear strategy together, and it became contagious. Glenn's all about growth. And he came in at just the right time when, when we had our finances in such a way, we had paid down our debt. Uh, it was time to grow. 
Everybody was enthralled and enthused for this goal. And I think it was the spark, the future that people were looking for, something they could hang their hat on. And I think everybody bought into it. It was time to focus on our customers and grow the market. And that's what Glenn does better than anybody. And you have to have something that is better tomorrow than it was today. Bankruptcy is not a positive word. We had to find a way to finalize that liability and go forward. I recall the day that uh, I took the recommendation to the board. I really held out hope uh, right up to the last moment that there would be some panacea, but there was none. And I always tell people October 5th, 2000 was my worst day at Owens Corning in 28 years. And October 6th was the best because now at long last we had a clear path forward. And I think because of that process, the company now has the opportunity to be bigger, stronger, and better than ever. We did it. We did it. And it was at that moment in time, I said, we're done. Now it's time to move forward and let's, let's worry about tomorrow. We're done worrying about the past. The growth opportunities are probably greater today than ever before. Remember what brought us here and remember what's going to take us to tomorrow. Discovering new things, trying new things, inventing new products, gaining new customers. That's what we've been really doing as a company since 1938. What's unique about our company is we're not only the market leader in just about everything we do. That is a strength beyond imagination. We actually invented just about everything we do. In a major breakthrough for technology, Jack Thomas, Dale Kleist, and Game Slater invent the process for making glass fiber. This is the time in our company where the, the talent of the future is being groomed. This is the time in the history of our company where long-term relationships with our customers are being formed. This is really the foundation of, of not only who we are today, but who we will be for years and years and years.